How do we tell if a graph has a vertical stretch or a compression in it? And the first thing that we need to know is, do we know the parent function? And I haven't been to, um, as specific maybe as I should have in terms of points. But what I have done, it says know the parent function. What I have done is I've tried to stress the pattern behind it. The parent function of a quadratic starts at the vertex of 0, 0. Remember, vertex is also known as the turning point. And then we go one space to the right and one up. So that point there is 1, 1. And then we went two spaces to the right and 4 up, which is 2, 4. And if you look to the left of 0, 0, you see mirror image points there. One space to the right, uh, sorry, one space to the left and one up. Two spaces to the left and 4 up to get our negative 1, 1 and negative 2, 4. And what we can do when we're trying to decide whether something has a vertical stretch or compression in it is look at the first points above the vertex. Did we go one space to the right and one up and one space to the left and one up? Or is it different? That's where we oftentimes can tell. Sometimes, though, you have to look at other points. But that's what I want to take a couple minutes to look at here today. And I have the parent function off to the side. But if we take a look here, we've got our vertex at 0, 0. But when we look at the graph, did we go one space to the right and one up? No. This time what we did is we went one space to the right and three up. So what we can say in this problem is that we have a vertical stretch. And then I want to identify by how much. But remember that our original point in our parent function is 1, 1. And what we did in our last set of notes is we took 1, the y value, and we multiplied it by 3. So, in, in other words, I should say 1, and then what did we multiply it by to get 3? Well, we multiplied it by 3. Does it make sense? Because our next point is 2, 4. If we take 4 times 3, do we get 12? And as we look at our graph there, we definitely do. So this is a vertical stretch by 3. When we're looking at pictures here, we want to look right past the vertex. The vertex, once again, is at 0, 0. But when we go one space, in, one space to the right and one space up, as we look at this graph, we went one space to the right, but we didn't go one space up. We only went 0.5 up. So are we going to be working with a vertical stretch or a vertical compression? And this one should be a vertical compression. Our 1 got smaller. And I'm talking about the 1 in this point over here, 1, 1, from our parent function. The y value 1 got smaller. And it got smaller because it got cut in half. 0.5, and by the way, I should, should have written that instead of 1 half, I should have written by 0.5 because that will probably make more sense to you because that's the point that's listed on a picture. So you probably get a general idea, especially if you had a good understanding from yesterday. But in general, when we look at this, does this problem look like a stretch or does it look like a compression? Looks like a stretch to me because it's very elongated. And this one is, it's a vertical stretch. But on this particular problem, what we don't have here is we don't have any specific points given to us. But how much did we stress by? Well, come over here and look at this point that's one space to the right. But instead of one up, we went up one, two, three, four spaces. So how much did we stretch by? We stretch by four. Number four. Take a look right past the vertex. In fact, again, we tend to look to the right, one space to the right and one up. Well, we want one space to the right, but did we go one up? No. Did we vertically stretch or vertically compress that? 
And it looks like we can press because we didn't even get to one. We went one space to the right, but we went a very small amount and we don't even know how much. So we can't tell what that compression is from this point here. So we need to look at another one. So we go to the next one. In our parent function, it's two spaces to the right and four up. We went two spaces to the right, but again, we went some fractional value. We don't know what that is. But over here in our third point, we went three spaces to the right and we went three up. If we look back at our parent function, we went three spaces to the right and nine up in our parent function. And that makes sense then that we would compress. How do we go from nine to three? Well, we divide by three is one way to look at it. And oftentimes the way I like to write it is I like to write it as a vertical compress by one third. One third times nine is three. But I just want to alert you to the fact that sometimes the way it's written is it's written as vertical compress by three. So sometimes it's written that way. I, again, I prefer the first way, but I want you to recognize that vertical compressed by three just means that we're going to take our factor and we're going to um, multiply it by one third, as the case may be. Compressing usually has a fraction value in it when we're dealing with vertical compressions, I should specify. Gonna skip number five and skip over here to number six here to finish. As we take a quick look at this one, there's two transformations happening. And probably the most notable is the first one. Do you know what it is? It's a reflection. We're gonna reflect. And we reflect over the x-axis. Well, again, as we really, our primary focus here is looking at the vertical stretch and vertical compress here. We do have one of those. And as we take a closer look, again, the pattern is, is that we would go one space to the right and one up. When we reflect, we would go one space to the right and one down. But just like the last problem here, we went down partial. So this is going to be a vertical compression. But now what we want to figure out is by how much. And we can't necessarily tell from that point there. But if we go to the next point in this case, this point, if you notice here, the, the the, the order pair isn't going to help us. But we went two spaces to the right, and we went two down. And again, vertical is always affecting the y value. And originally, in our parent function, we went two spaces to the right and four up. Well, how does four relate to two now? Well, it's half. Lastly, what I want to do, and I know that this paper doesn't ask us to do it, but on our practice, we need to do it. How do we write the equation of this function? Because not only did we reflect over the x-axis, and not only do we have the vertical compression, I totally overlooked the fact that we do have one more transformation, and that is that we went down four. Our vertex is down four here. So how do we write this equation of this picture in vertex form? Just a reminder that vertex form is y equals a times x minus h y squared plus k. We'll reflect. 
when we write this here, reflect is a negative in front of the function. So the reflection is the negative. The vertical compression, one half. Then it's going to be x squared. And if you want to get technical, we're, we didn't move the x value anyway. We didn't move it right or left. So it's minus 0, and I'll change that in a minute. And then the down 4 is going to be our k, which is minus 4. The only reason why I write it in that format is so that you recognize that the vertex or the turning point here is 0, negative 4. And lastly, we could have written it as y equals negative 1 half x squared minus 4.